The world is full of fascinating landmarks, famous structures, natural wonders, and historic sites that draw millions of visitors each year. But sprinkled amongst the Eiffel Towers and Grand Canyons are some decidedly weird and wacky landmarks. From a house covered entirely in beer cans to an eccentric technicolor mountain covered in religious iconography, these quirky destinations are testament to human creativity, eccentricity, and humor. For travelers looking for something off the beaten path and unapologetically odd, here are 10 of the weirdest landmarks around the globe. Zizkov Television Tower, Prague, Czech Republic. At first glance, the Zizkov Television Tower looks like a normal, if extremely tall, TV tower rising above the city of Prague. But look closer and you'll notice an unusual feature. Giant baby statues crawling up its sides. These faceless metallic infants are the work of controversial Czech artist David Cerny. The tower itself was built between 1985 and 1992, when the Czech Republic was still part of the communist bloc. Many locals consider it an ugly relic of Soviet rule, which perhaps inspired Cerny's creepy art installation in 2000 called Tower Babies. The sculptor claimed the babies were meant to be an ironic nod to the tower's history. Love them or hate them, the huge climbing babies make the Zizkov Television Tower one of the weirdest landmarks in Eastern Europe. Visiting the 700-foot tower's observation deck is a must for stunning city views. And a closer look at those unnerving infants. Salvation Mountain, Neyland, California. Deep in the Colorado desert of Southern California, a vivid mirage seems to rise from the arid landscape. Known as Salvation Mountain, this eye-popping art project is the creation of one man, Leonard Knight. The Vermont native began building the colorful mountain in 1984, using mostly donated materials like hay bales, discarded tires, and countless buckets of paint. A devout Christian, Knight said his goal was to spread the message that God is love. For nearly 30 years, he lived out of his truck and worked on the ever-evolving mountain every day until his health declined. He died in 2014 at age 82. Today, volunteers continue to maintain and expand Salvation Mountain, which now covers about 150 feet of desert and contains numerous murals, caverns, and hand-painted Bible verses. Visiting feels like stumbling into a Dr. Seuss book with its bright turrets, curving domes, and winding yellow brick road all constructed from adobe clay. It's a poignant example of how one passionate person with a simple message can create something utterly unique. As Knight himself put it, I'm not trying to be an artist, I'm trying to be a lover of God. The Big Pineapple, Bathurst, South Africa. Move over, Big Apple. The Big Pineapple has arrived. This 56-foot-tall fiberglass fruit towers over the Bathurst Pineapple Museum in South Africa's Eastern Cape Province. Built in the 1980s, the enormous pineapple originally housed a gift shop and observation deck in its crown accessed by an interior staircase. While the inside is currently closed, visitors can still marvel at the quirky exterior and explore the museum next door, which delves into the history of pineapple farming in South Africa. Turns out the sweet, spiky fruit is one of the region's top crops. If a building-sized pineapple isn't weird enough, consider this. Bathurst's giant pineapple isn't even the world's largest. That honor goes to Australia's big pineapple in Queensland, which is 52 feet tall. Honorable mentions also go to the Big Pineapple in Okinawa, Japan, and the Big Mo, a pineapple-shaped former restaurant in Peoria, Illinois. Clearly, humanity's fondness for novelty-sized fruit knows no borders. Minefield, Brownsville, Tennessee Artist Billy Tripp began constructing his gargantuan sculpture Minefield in 1989 when he was going through a painful divorce. Using scavenged steel objects like beams, poles, wheels, and tanks, he started erecting a series of connected towers in a field next to his family's house in the small town of Brownsville, Tennessee. Over three decades later, the sprawling steel jungle is still growing and now features a honeycomb of metal walkways, bridges, and spirals. It covers about an acre of land, and its tallest spire is 125 feet high. Trip, a firefighter by day, does all the welding and assembly himself. He considers Minefield his life's work and plans to keep building it until he physically can't anymore. Art historians have likened the massive structure to a modern-day Watts Towers, the famed folk art masterpiece in Los Angeles. But Tripp resists comparisons and pretentious artist statements. 
To him, Minefield's meaning lies solely in the winding, rusting story of its construction, which in turn mirrors his own life story full of struggles, perseverance, and constant evolution. It is, as Tripp puts it, a diary in steel. Visitors can wander through part of the ever-changing sculpture garden and even chat with the artist himself if he's out welding that day. The Upside-Down House, Zimbark, Poland this seemingly gravity-defying house looks like it was ripped straight out of a surreal painting or sci-fi movie. Built by Polish businessman and philanthropist Daniel Chapiewski, the topsy-turvy blue cottage is a fully furnished family home flipped on its head. Visitors enter through a roof window and climb up the attic to reach the living room, bedrooms, bathroom, and kitchen all with furniture and decor secured to the ceilings. Walking through the disorienting structure feels a bit like exploring a house in the aftermath of a UFO abduction. Outside, the surrounding gardens are also charmingly askew, with flipped fences and diagonal trees enhancing the tumbled effect. Chapiewski said he created the whimsical house as a commentary on the upside-down state of former communist countries in the modern era. Inside the property, he also placed exhibits on Polish history and the Solidarity anti-communist movement. But even without the symbolism, the remarkable feat of topsy-turvy architecture is enough to boggle the minds of visitors. As one tourist declared after a dizzying tour, Wow, that was a unique experience. I've never gone downstairs to use the toilet before. Carhenge, Alliance, Nebraska Stonehenge, that mysterious prehistoric monument in England, has inspired countless myths, replicas, and souvenir paperweights. But only one man had the inspired idea to recreate the stone circle out of vintage American cars. In 1987, artist Jim Reinders built Carhenge as a memorial to his father on the family farm near Alliance, Nebraska. He and about 35 friends and relatives gathered to paint and arrange 39 old automobiles in the same proportions as Stonehenge, a burial ritual held on the summer solstice, just as archaeologists believe ancient Druids did at the original Stonehenge. Today, Carhenge cuts a striking figure against the flat Nebraska plains. Most of the graffitied vehicles are from the 1950s and 60s, with great fins and bulky grills. Some are stacked on top of each other to form the iconic arch shapes. The whole scene is at once nostalgic, silly, and oddly beautiful, especially at sunrise or sunset. Since Reinders donated the 10-acre site to a local group in 2013, it has become a free roadside attraction and gathering place for art lovers, auto buffs, and fans of oversized kitsch. Reinders passed away in 2021, but his junkyard tribute to human ingenuity, craftsmanship, and family will endure. The Crooked House, Sopot, Poland from fairy tales to haunted houses, the Crooked House is a classic image of whimsy and weird. But the lopsided blue and green building in the Polish beach town of Sopot takes the concept to a whole new warped level. Inspired by the artwork of Polish illustrator Jan Markin Sanser, the surreal structure looks like something out of Alice in Wonderland. No surface is straight. Walls, windows, and roof lines all curve and buckle as if made of wet clay. Built in 2004, the vertigo-inducing building actually contains shops, restaurants, and office space. Strolling through it feels a bit like exploring a cartoon funhouse after one drink too many. Outside, the Crooked House sits in a plaza, fittingly named Monte Cassino, after the famously twisted street in Monaco. Love it or hate it, the architecturally mind-bending building has become a top tourist attraction in Sopot drawing visitors eager for a taste of the topsy-turvy. Bring your camera, but maybe skip the pre-visit cocktails. The Beer Can House, Houston, Texas One man's trash is another man's treasure. Or in the case of retired upholsterer John Milkovich, the makings of a one-of-a-kind house covered in beer cans. For over 20 years, Milkovich collected empty beer cans from his own prodigious drinking and even scavenged them from neighbors and streets. Starting in 1968, he painstakingly cut open, flattened, and began blanketing every inch of his modest bungalow in can tops, bottoms, and tabs to form eye-catching decorative patterns. Garlands made of curtains of pull tabs dangle and jingle in the breeze. The house's lawn and fences are studded with concrete blocks bejeweled with marbles, rocks, and pieces of metal. The end result is part alcohol-fueled art project, part eccentric's glittering palace. Milkovich, who passed away in 1988, said his main motivation was that it was a fun pastime and that it tickled him to watch people screech to a halt when they spotted the house. 
Though he reportedly hated the taste of beer, he downed it dutifully for his project, saying, I don't believe I ever drank one, just to be drinking it. After Milkovich's death, Houston's Orange Show Center for Visionary Art took over the property. It's now a permanent museum to one man's thirst-quenching vision. The Possum Drop, Brasstown, North Carolina Each New Year's Eve, thousands gather in New York's Times Square to watch the crystal ball drop at midnight. But in the tiny Appalachian town of Brasstown, North Carolina, folks ring in the New Year by lowering a live opossum in a transparent plexiglass box. Yes, really. The annual possum drop began in the early 1990s as a way to draw visitors to Clay's Corner, a country store and gas station. Owner Clay Logan, dressed in a tuxedo top hat, presides over the affair, which features music, snacks, and, of course, one mildly confused marsupial. At midnight, the lucky opossum is slowly lowered from the roof of Clay's Corner as the crowd cheers. After the big countdown, the animal is released unharmed back into the woods. The quirky tradition hasn't been without controversy. Animal rights groups argue it's cruel and tried unsuccessfully to get the event shut down. In 2018, Logan had to switch to lowering a pot of opossum stew due to legal issues over using a live critter. But he's vowed to keep the possum drop going as long as he can. To outsiders, it may seem a baffling ritual. But for the people of Brasstown, the possum drop is a beloved slice of local culture, not unlike Spain's Running of the Bulls or Mexico's Day of the Dead. It's a reminder that one town's weird tradition is another's treasured, if offbeat, heritage. Just maybe leave your PETA shirt at home. The Icelandic Phallological Museum, Reykjavik, Iceland. And now we come to what is quite possibly the weirdest landmark of them all, the Icelandic Phallological Museum in Reykjavik. Yes, you read that right, a museum entirely dedicated to penises. Before you accuse us of clickbait, let us assure you this place is very, very real. Founded in 1997 by historian Sigurdur Hjartarsson, the museum houses the world's largest collection of phallic specimens belonging to various land and sea mammals. There are teeny hamster willies, massive whale rods, and everything in between. In total, the museum boasts over 280 junk artifacts, mostly preserved through taxidermy or stored in jars of formaldehyde. For obvious reasons, it's affectionately known as the Dick Museum, but the attraction strives to be educational, not salacious. Each display is accompanied by earnest scientific information about the specimen's biology and origin. Human genitalia is also part of the collection, including a silver penis sculpture from a local artist and an emergency castration device from the 19th century. The crown jewels are undoubtedly the museum's handful of folklore specimens, supposed penises from mythical creatures like trolls, kelpies, and mermen. In a country that believes in magical elves, anything's possible. Love it or loathe it, there's no denying that the Icelandic Phallological Museum takes the prize for the world's most oddball landmark. It's a ballsy reminder that human curiosity comes in all shapes and sizes, and sometimes involves an avalanche of disembodied dongs. Now it's time to hear from you. Have you visited any of these wacky landmarks? What's the weirdest attraction you've ever encountered on your travels? Do you think these oddball places have value, or are they just roadside rubbish? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below.